Let's look at a few examples of questions that can be answered by taking advantage of properties of logarithms. Here's an example. We want to simplify this expression log base 3 of 32 minus log base 3 of 4. And up in the top right corner, we've got a list of the most commonly used properties for working with logarithms. So for example, you can see here that I have a difference, one logarithm minus another logarithm, and both logarithms have the same base of 3. And that matches up with this property, log base b of x minus log base b of y. So they both have the same base, and I'm subtracting the two logarithms. And that's equivalent to the, if I just take a quotient, the argument of the first logarithm divided by the argument of the second logarithm, and then take a single logarithm of that fraction. So in this case, this 32 we can think of as an x, and this 4 we can think of as a y, so that it matches up with this form. And according to this property, this is going to be the same as the logarithm base 3, so same base as on the other side of the identity, of the fraction x over y, which in this case is 32 over 4. And you can simplify that a little bit more because 32 divided by 4 is 8. So our final answer for this problem would be log base 3 of 8. Here's another example. This time we're adding two logarithms with the same base together. And that corresponds to this property. And we can see that the identity tells us we can simply multiply the arguments of the two logarithms together. So if we do that, we'll have log base 5 of the product 4x times 2x squared. And let's simplify that argument. 4 times 2 is 8. x times x squared is x cubed. Here's another one where we have a difference. Uh, so that looks like the second property again. But there's a slight complication here because we've got these coefficients in front. And the property I want to use doesn't have coefficients in front. How are we going to deal with that? Well, now we can go up to this first property, which tells us how to use, uh, how, how to deal with coefficients. Uh, if we look actually at the right side of this inequality, there's a quantity in front of the logarithm. And that's equivalent to putting the coefficient of the logarithm inside as an exponent. So for example, 3 log base 2 of x, if I take this 3, I can move it inside and make it an exponent. So I'll get log of 2x quantity cubed. So I have to be careful. It's not just x cubed. It's the whole argument 2x that has to be cubed. So let's be careful about that. Do the same thing on the right side. I can take this 4 and move it in. And I have log of x. Now notice, by the way, that we don't see a base written here. Uh, if we just write log of x, that's short for log base 10 of x. It's called the common logarithm. So there is a base here, but when it's log base 10, we can just leave out the 10. Okay, so I've rewritten each of the two terms in this difference. Now, I can also simplify the expression inside the first logarithm because 2x quantity cubed, that's 2 cubed times x cubed, so that's 8x cubed. And now I'm ready to use our bottom property out of this list where I change the difference into a single logarithm of the quotient. 
8x cubed divided by x. And one more step to simplify that, we'll write it as 8x squared. Here's another one, ln of 3. Now, ln of x, that's another logarithm where it doesn't look like we're writing a base, but ln actually means it's log base e, where e is this special number. It's approximately 2.718, but it's not exactly that. Um, the exact value is very important, and it turns out that it's uh, especially useful in calculus to use logarithms base e. So natural logarithms are much more convenient than other logarithms for a lot of applications. Uh, but we don't need to know any of that in order to use these properties. So what do I have here? Well, I have a coefficient of 1 half, which I can put inside using the first property. So this coefficient moves inside to give me uh, natural log of 3 doesn't change plus natural log of x to the 1 half. By the way, we can rewrite that. Instead of writing a 1 half power, it might be more pleasing to write square root of x. And then I have a sum of two logarithms. So the second property in this list tells me how to combine that into a single logarithm by multiplying the two arguments together, 3 times the square root of x. Now here's one more where we're actually going to go the other way. Notice how the previous questions had us simplifying, but this one has us expanding. So that means we're going to write it in more simpler terms. Usually when we s simplify, we try to combine things uh, into one term. But now we're going to break it up into several terms, but each piece ought to look a little bit simpler than this whole thing. Uh, so now notice how this denominator is written y caret 5. That caret is the way you might enter something on a calculator. That's the same as writing y to the fifth. Okay, um, now I have this whole quantity inside here. It's a square root of x cubed over y to the fifth. Instead of taking the square root of that, I can think of that as a one-half power. So this is just like the property we were using for roots and fractional exponents in the last question. And the reason I'm doing that is because now I'm going to bring that exponent out front. And this right becomes 1 half natural log of x cubed over y to the fifth. Now inside my logarithm I have a quotient and the first the, the last property in my list of logarithms will tell me how to split that up. So instead of writing it as natural log of x cubed over y to the fifth, I'll write natural log of x cubed minus natural log of y to the fifth. Okay. Now let's use the property of bringing these exponents out front as coefficients one more time. So the first logarithm here, natural log of x cubed, becomes 3 natural log of x. And the second one becomes 5 natural log of y. And then one more thing we might want to do is distribute this coefficient of 1 half to the two terms inside parentheses here, giving us 3 halves natural log of x minus 5 halves natural log of y. 